and one. Hello, you guys. Jade, go ahead and finish. Oh, thank you. Oh, my goodness, the graciousness. Welcome to the Women's Cave. I'm Jade. It just doesn't feel as exciting. Oh! <laughs> you, uh, you had a little burp in between there. Well, no, that's just, what I get for <laughs> eating pizza. <laughs> <laughs> pizza telling on you. <laughs> See, and there you go, the end <laughs> of the professionalism. No, you thought it. You yeah, thought that it was going to be professional. We lied to y'all. <laughs> never, never professional here. But never. anyway, my name is Winona, not Winona Burp. There you go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's Winona Burp. And I'm so Winona. I mean, look. Well, I guess we can't talk about We don't really have banter. I mean, after you belch on camera. It's yeah, like, it's pretty much over. Like, there's no other. The banter that we had planned, maybe, is gone. Yeah. So, I don't I don't know what else to say. We have books. No, we have literary life guides with pop. I was right. Well done. High, social distance. Social distance. Yeah, high five, though. I really wanted you to distance. go with the elbow bump. I oh, elbow bump? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Elbow bump. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I'm much cooler now. Yes, yes, we are. Let's I'm go, old, but so. cool. Well, and the, this pandemic is making everyone old, okay? <laughs> We're all wearing masks. We're all walking slowly and, like, keeping a whole bunch of dividends. We're all, like, looking out of our window, like, that person better not knock on my door. Yeah, UPS, but leave it right there on our front porch. Better leave it. No knock. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. That's the literary life guys of pop poetry. <laughs> yeah, literary life guys of pop poetry. And I thought divorce was bad with other life lessons, and I thought being grown up was easy. You got a new book. It did. So just for y'all to listen in on the podcast, just go ahead on Amazon and check it out because it is really amazing. I love it. Both of those I, books are available on audible.com. Yeah. Or, I mean, well, Audible, it's not going to have that amazing. It's going to have another one, but whatever. doesn't yeah, matter. It doesn't matter. Sucks. It doesn't matter. But that's okay. So there's 13 of the And I Thought series. You can go watch, read all of them on um, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or, like, andwethought.com. Check it out. And then we have the Misfit Guide series, and then we... That's have If idea. Only I Were Me, which is our departure. Basically, it's just pop poetry. It's not like any Life Guy essay stuff. It's just poetry. Mm. And you can find that out on barnesandnoble.com. And then we are the co-founders of the 25 Hottest Indie Authors, Artists, and Advocate magazine. And you can find out more information and everything your ladies are doing on www.andwethought.com. But you're not here to hear about us. You're here to hear about our wonderful guests. guests. Wonderful guest, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, hello, everybody. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you guys for inviting me. Um, my name is M.M. Fink, but people call me Peggy. Um, the M.M. is my, you know, initials. Uh, I am a writer and editor, and I, um, I love all things writing and books, and I think writers are some of the most generous people that I've ever met, and I really enjoy, a lot of my friends are writers, and um, I just feel like I came home when I found my writing community, so uh, that's pretty, I live in Virginia, anything else? No, I'm, I'm, no. I want to talk about some food, though, because Virginia, oh. that's when the biscuits start to get good. Oh my gosh, the biscuits are the best. They're, they're, they're the best. And the fried chicken uh, and peanuts. Oh. And what else we get? I don't eat ham, but apparently we have very, very good ham here. Yeah, yeah. Ham on that. That's a day. Oh, mm. man, that's life. Okay, so I'm sorry. I, you, we actually have real questions. Yes. Well, for, you know, all the time when we, I think I told this to like a thousand times before, but every time we send out our emails to ask people, we go, pick a subject. And normally they go, what date do you want me to show up? And they never pick a subject. But Ms. Fink has picked the subject. So we are yes. going to be respectful. Semi professional. Go figure. Uh, semi professional. <laughs> it's semi. And we use that. Loosely. Yeah. <laughs> Loosely. And we're going to stick with her topic and then, like, yeah. ask the question. So here we go. Question one is, what is a troop? Trope. 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 A trope. Yeah, you see? This is why I shouldn't read. Well, no, my professional. Yeah, so my professional. That's why I don't do it. So what is it, though? <laughs> okay, so I actually give this talk a lot. I've done it um, multiple different uh, conferences and to write to different writing associations. It seems really to be a popular one, so I'm really glad that we agreed on this one because I think it does help because starting to write a book is so overwhelming. You know, you wonder, like, is this a good story? Where do I start? And so tropes often um, kind of kickstart your imagination. So a trope is basically a storytelling convention that a writer can can pretty much rely that the, the readers will recognize it. So 
for example, like we can go through examples later, but one would be say rags to riches. So you read the story and you're like, oh, okay, this is rags to riches. So once you, once the, uh, um, the, and it's actually really interesting, the brain starts to recognize what's coming and that, that part of the brain, for example, like when a, a character is going down a scary stairwell into the basement, right, or into a cellar, the part of the brain that um, recognizes anxiety gets actually like activated before anything has even happened. So it kind of helps heighten the story. So tropes help heighten the story because they um, hook into what readers are already familiar with. Oh. Okay, so I'm sure that many people would consider that cheating, but is it though? You know, it's not like question it is. number two. But I was trying to do a segue. Okay. So high five on the segue. <laughs> yes. Oh, that was no social distance. I'm gonna have to be a hand. <laughs> it sounds like it's cheating, but it's not. It's it's actually the best way to tell a story because, um, and we can talk about this later. Like, how do you use cliches without cheating? And really, there's no such thing as cheating because we could both. I took an art class when I was in high school. I'm not I'm not artistic at all, but we were looking out the window at like the view outside of the window from our art classroom. And I thought, well, this is silly. Everybody's painting is gonna end up looking exactly the same. But they, you wouldn't even be able to tell that people were looking at the same scene. Like there is no, like we all have our own um, understanding, our way to look at the world, our own viewpoints, our own voice, all that stuff. So you take a trope, but none of us will write it in the same way. So it's just a way again to engage the reader. Now, you said that it's often considered as a cliche, but oh no, you you covered that perfectly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had some questions. But really nice answer. done. Really nicely done. I know. Okay. Like I feel like. What are the three types of tropes? Yes. Okay, so there are um, plot tropes, which is if you'll let me, I'd like to give examples of those later. The plot tropes, um, for an example, is like a love and a love triangle or David and Goliath. Those are the story, the plot tropes. And then there's character tropes. So like the evil stepmother is, is a character trope. Um, and then there's in-scene plot devices and settings. For example, um, when there's two people and there's, there's sexual chemistry between them, and, but they're resisting it and they have to spend the night somewhere and there's only one bed. So like that would be an in-scene trap or like in-scene trope or, um, I don't know why I'm thinking all these romance ones, but you know, when there's there a, there's lots of tension and they're fighting against it and all of a sudden they're getting closer and closer and a kiss is imminent and then someone opens the door, there's some interruption, like that's an in-scene trope. Um, when somebody is nervous and scary and they're walking through, you know, something like a creepy cellar or whatever and then somebody taps them on the shoulder and they scream and the person who taps them on the shoulder is actually like their friend or whatever, that's an in-scene trope. So those are the three. So there's plot, character, and then in-scene. I love it. I know. <laughs> I, was, I was like, uh, I'm happy to find out I used an in-scene trope in my script. I'm, I'm so, so proud I'm, of you. I'm, I'm proud, proud of me. I did Good something conventional. Yeah, and I brought it back to me because I'm the narcissist, by the way. <laughs> Next question, four. Four? Um, yeah, let me just go. I'm going to go to five, yeah. You like we, five? Because we absolutely are prepared today. So are all tropes good? Okay, that's a great question. No. Some of them, um, some of them, the one I hope never comes back is the girl that says, I'm not like every other girl, you know, like I, like the way she distances herself from other women. That's, now we recognize that as misogynist. And so, and it's, and so we have to, so that one I hope never comes back. And it's not there, it's not really around right now. Um, another one that was bad, let me see where I'm on, that, on my notes for that. Um, another one that was bad when, um, and we've gotten more involved is there would be like a gay character and this would be a lot in teen and YA. There would be a gay character, but the gay character had no arc, no storyline, no inner life. His, his or her only characteristic was that they were gay. And so that we've gone beyond that and recognized that that's not the way to treat a character, even if it's a side character. Um, let's see. Oh yeah. And then there's um, some that are harmless. Like there's, there's one that you, I feel like it's in superhero movies a lot, 
um, a woman's pushing the baby stroller and then all of a sudden she almost gets hit by a truck. You know, like they're, it's harmless, but it's just so overdone. Um, so that would be an in-scene trope that's overdone. So they're not all good, but um, they, I think if you read a lot and you are, you know, you watch TV a lot, then you just trust your instincts on what is, you know, what you doesn't feel original to you. And I bet you won't even accidentally use one. Oh, oh, I was scared good. there for a moment. I was like, it, 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 was the trope I used the ones like that? Okay, cool. <laughs> Are you good? Oh, no. I'm good. <laughs> I don't want to rewrite the scene. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I want to talk about, we want to talk a little bit about you as a, oh, as your career, because, I mean, you having, having and had. Whatever. <laughs> An amazing career. <laughs> it's probably like we're like the worst interviewers ever. I know, right? Because you guys, y'all well, that are out there, she interviews people. Right, and we're probably <laughs> horrible. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. I didn't think about that. That's true. But, you know, I don't live interview them. I interview them in writing, so I can, you know, I can kind of fake it a little better. You guys are doing like the real thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Oh, we used I, we did used to be better, and then life happened. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's talk about like, your career, because you have these major list of all your accomplishments, which are just amazing. So I'm going to just give you an opportunity to list what you have done. Oh, it's you're amazing. so kind. Um, it's not the way that I planned everything to go. I, I started... I, was, I wrote a novel before I knew anything about that I wanted to be a writer. It was just kind of a lurk. And, um, and then I loved it. And then everyone, I mean, I just had so much fun. It was such a high. And then everyone said, are you going to try to get it published? I didn't have the slightest clue how to do that. And so I made every possible mistake in the books. But then eventually I kind of figured out my way and I met people like you guys. And I, you know, I got into Writers Association. So anybody watching here who feels like they want to write, but they don't know where to start. I would say, look for your local, and especially in times of COVID, look for online writers associations and take classes and do, and that's what I did. So I eventually um, got representation with um, Katie Shea Boudelier with Donald Moss Literary Agency. And along the way, a lot of other things kind of overtook my actual, my own fiction writing. I ended up, because I work with agents for, um, I run a two segments for women's writers, women's books platform. Um, it's a website and a Facebook uh, group and, an e and a zine. Um, and I interview literary agents and editors. I also interview authors in, um, like I've interviewed Emily Giffen, Taylor Jenkins Reid, Lisa Jewell. Um, really been very lucky to um, get in contact with some big name people. And, um, and then that kind of took over and then I became an editor and I was working with query letters and because I had the ear of agents, I knew what they wanted and what they liked and they didn't like. And so my editorial business really like blew up. And so that's been um, kind of my focus for the last couple years. And I love that too, but I'm now getting back into my own writing. And uh, my next one is going to be a suspense. And um, the uh, and yeah, I've been on the Women's Fiction Writers Board uh, for two terms. And I'm involved, I'm a guest contributor for Writer Unboxed, where when I was just talking about like, find your community, Writer Unboxed is a great one. Um, it's not genre specific, so I did. I don't know. Did I? Did I help? Did I answer the right question? Yes, absolutely. That was like, that was amazing. And yeah, I just wanted you to say all of that because I was like, <laughs> if I said it, I would mess it up somewhere in the middle and like mispronounce things. So oh, how about that? Yeah, understand. Like when you, when you sent over your bio, we looked at it and went, "Oh, that's a lot." Because we've done this <laughs> I'm before. Sorry. And people no, were, no, 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 not no, like that. Not you. No. It's for us. It's because we've done this before for like conferences and people send over like page long bios and then we'll be like, No, you introduce yourself and someone was like, No, you introduce me and we did this for like seven minutes and we finally like, All right, we'll read it and then by the time we get to paragraph three they were like, I'll introduce me and I was like, No duh, we said that <laughs> we're not we're, we're bad at this <laughs> So you know, and plus people know what they want to share with the world. Let's just be honest. You know what you want people to know about you. There you go. I would rather go hear it from you. So do you think being a part of all these associations has helped with your writing? Not in, like, just learning and improving, but when well, you I get go, journalism also. Yeah, and with, with your journalism also. But when you go to write a scene now, do you just take pieces of 
like almost pieces of, of the people that you meet there and putting them in a character now or do you just no, only use the I wouldn't say I've ever done that. I think what it helps with is um, it helps with keeping your like butt in the chair, right? Like show up every day. Um, and then I think it helps with there's a lot of workshops and webinars that you can take. And I think that you, you read other people's writing in the workshops and that is inspirational and you see how other people did things. And then also I found all of my critique partners, my beta readers all through associations and memberships. So um, I think the, I think the, I, it's good training, um, but it's, but I can get training from books. Like I'm, I'm everywhere around me are stacks of like writing books right now. But if I move them, I'm gonna jiggle the camera. I'm mean, jiggle the. Uh, oh, here's one that won't move the computer. Um, I mean, I just I I learn a lot about writing through books, um, writing books. But I get I think it's the community that I get mostly through the associations and the just the people and the connections and the um, accountability. Oh, yeah. I definitely enjoy the accountability. Right. For the first time ever in my life, I actually need to be accountable. And a writer's association found me to be like, hey, so I'm writing here and you're writing there. So like, we're supposed to be done on the same day. Yeah. Let's do it. And Let's do it. I'm still not done, but I told her I'm finished. Well, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do what you got to do. Like, you had like a last, she said, you didn't say you were finished. You were like, I have like a last scene. And literally she had. One last thing. Yeah, that's true. So let's talk about the the three no, I things. Have a I, hello. I have a question. <sighs> My narcissism is taking a back seat. Guys. Absolutely, absolutely. It is. So let's talk about the three things that you would tell um, a new writer to to do. I mean, one of them you've already mentioned. Join a writers group. Um, what are the other two? Um, wake up earlier than you plan to and write every day because even if you're not a morning person and I'm not really a morning person, but you, when you wake up in the morning and you start, even if all you get is one paragraph, it's like the, the gears are already greased and you can, when you do, when you are able to sit back down later after work or at lunch or whenever, the, the gears are already greased. And so you can start, you just, you start faster, you're more productive more quickly if you write for even 20 minutes or half an hour in the morning. Um, so that would be, I would say a second thing. Um, and then I think I would say, don't overwhelm yourself with craft books. Like I just said, I love craft books, like the Save, um, Save the Cat Writes a Novel, Story Genius by Lisa Cron, Wired for Story by Lisa Cron, anything by Donald Moss. I love, love craft books, but they can become a way to procrastinate and you just keep studying and studying and then you're not, and the best way to actually learn to write is to write, not just to read about writing. And so I would say, don't you, don't go, like maybe read once a quarter or, or a couple a year. Don't read them like over and over, like many, many, because also you get so many voices in your head and they don't all even have the same approach. And I think you can get really overwhelmed. And I think when you're, when you're a new writer and then over and over throughout your career at different parts of your career, you're like, like when you plant a seed in the garden and then the seed comes up and it's, it's just that tiny little teeny thing that's thinner than a piece of grass. That's what it's like when you're a new writer and too much information is like too much rain and it will like smash that little thing. So, you know, definitely read craft books, but don't, but don't get overwhelmed by them. <laughs> I do have two questions now because like that seed, <laughs> I have grown. <laughs> oh, three. I lied. I have three. I, I know you have three. Do you have Save the Cat, the script book? Um, I have, I have the one written for novels, but I've read uh, the, um, I've read like extracts, abstracts of the one that's for the script. Oh, I think it's amazing. Like, I don't think I've ever met like a screenwriter that doesn't just like have it. And so, like, I didn't even know he did a novel one. Now I have to get. Yeah, no. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Second question. Your second, my second question is, how did you balance the administrative part? Like when you said you were on the boards of certain places and you write for like on Bob's and all that, with the, your creative? Because I, I'm not gonna lie, I do it every day, and my administrative wins almost every. 
Yeah, I, I will say that there was a year there, it was very, very intense. Um, the Women's Fiction Writers Association was, we were actually um, moving to a new, like creating a new website, like absolutely everything down, I everything down to the coding. And um, I had un, only a tiny bit of computer programming when I was in college, and that was quite a long time ago. And but I was the VP of communications. So every single word on the website had to go through me, every single piece of punctuation, every single word. And then I had to get involved in the coding. Um, and so there was like a, a six month period where I don't think I wrote anything um, for myself. And it was extremely stressful. And it was really hard to start back again, because for me, um, the longer I'm away from my writing, the harder it is to get back to it, because it feels like like pushing a gigantic boulder back to the top of the hill. And I know most of that is emotional. It's me getting out of my own way. Um, but it's, cause it's hard, it's scary to write, especially when, you, when you're not writing just for fun, when you're writing, cause you have a goal like to get published or to get, you know, to reach some other sort of like level. And um, so it sometimes that happens, but otherwise I would say the answer is just to stick with the schedule. And that's where writing in the morning helps because when you write in the morning, then you're saying to yourself, that's my number one priority. You start with the thing that's most important to you, and then it, it's just easier to get back to. I'm not always great at putting that into practice, but that's, you know, that's my advice. That's what I try to do. <laughs> and of course, number three is uh, we hear a lot about these books. I haven't seen them or heard titles. So can, can you tell us about them? No, well, I, I can't because I had... Um, one book called Hashtag 11140 was recently, my agent recently took it out and it didn't sell because this is so crazy. Publishing is so crazy. The whole convention, it was a retelling, a modern retelling of You've Got Mail. And the um, concept was that the, um, the bookstore owner was actually a woman who wrote, a single mother who wrote a love note writing app. And then, and it was based on 140 characters because at the time that was the limit on Twitter. So the entire book has 140 character love notes throughout the entire book. It's at the top of every chapter. It's like integral to most of the scenes. And the, um, and the bad guy, the like big Fox books guy was this uh, romantic, you know, enemy who owned a, um, like a kind of like a Hallmark company. And so it was like, it was so great. Like all these editors immediately were like, we want it, we want it. Everybody was reading it. And then, Twitter went to like 280 characters and my whole book just like fell apart. So now I'm writing the next one. <laughs> oh. I know, right? That's how, that's publishing sometimes. <laughs> you have to tell publish that that was a lot of work. Oh my word. <laughs> well, think about it. You don't have to. You don't have to. But, but think about it. Yes. And we'd love to read it. I mean, either way, I would love to read it. So I'm like, I want to read it. I'm like, I want to read this book. Oh, you guys are so sweet. Thank you so much. Maybe. I mean, I think, you know, when you put all of your heart and your soul and your time and everything into something, and then it was like out of my hands. Because when you have an agent, like they, then they take it and they, you know, go to sell it. And you, it's like, you kind of, you kind of like divorced from it a little bit because you don't know what's, you don't have any control over it anymore. You don't know what's going to happen. And you just kind of have to start putting all that same love and energy into your next project. And so I, that's where I am now. And I'm just like, you know, God owes me one now. That's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> that's fabulous. So where can people find out more about you and what you have going on? So my website is mmfink at I, like dot com so it's uh f as in frank i n c k whichever you see me c c k everybody forgets the c k and then i'm all over the place i'm on facebook i'm not on instagram but i'm on uh, facebook and goodreads and uh twitter and you know i'm i'm easy to find i'm all around and i love to hear from people and i love to hear from writers and readers and people interviewers and anybody <laughs> Oh, I feel like we should ask again if we can interview her. Yeah, absolutely. I was going to say. It was such a delightful invite. Yes, it was. I so, absolutely. You we again. I promise yes, that I'll to. be more responsible with the days and the times and everything. 
Yeah, life not happens life. to us all, y'all. Yes, and it's COVID, so it's not like we're doing anything. Today. I mean, really, what are we doing? Nothing. Well, well actually, no, that's not true. Today is a beach day. I'm going to the beach right after this is over. Right, but it's a private community beach that nobody uses, which is ridiculous. And it's only six blocks that way. So, yeah, we're going. So I'm going to go today. That's what I'm doing today. Go but uh, <laughs> I guess I should Jane, wrap us up. Would you like to wrap us up? Thank you so much for coming on today. We really appreciate it. And you can find everything your ladies are doing on www.andwethought.com. Dot com. While you're there, take a moment, go to the Ladies tab, go to the middle of the page, and see the charities that we proudly support. Yes, we know that times are hard. So money, eh, you know, you might not have any. That's okay. And you might think, oh, and I'm just going to clean it out. You have all these extra books and stuff, and you were thinking, you know what I should do? I should donate it to a charity. Maybe you want to think about donating some of those used things to these charities. Or you can't do that, and that's okay, too. It's fine. Go click on their website, see what they're doing, and just write them a little note that says, Hey, we see what you're doing in the world. Thank you. Thank you for doing it. Because we all need encouragement. Who doesn't need encouragement? I need encouragement. Well, I definitely need encouragement. We all need a little encouragement every once in a while. And so we thank you in advance for that. And just remember, wisdom is all around you. If you're open to finding it and accepting it. So peace and love, you guys, from Monona, who will be at the beach soon. <laughs> and Jade, thanks for listening. Bye. Thank you for having me.